this is the solution of section A. The first question. They are saying that the line is making 90 degrees and 60 degrees respectively with the positive direction of the x-axis and y-axis. So alpha is uh, 90 degrees, beta is 60 degrees. So cos alpha which is equal to L is cos 90 which is 0. Cos beta which is equal to M is cos 60 degrees which is equal to 1 by 2. And we all know that L square plus M square plus N squared is equal to 1. Therefore, 0 plus 1 by 4 plus n squared is equal to 1. This implies n squared is equal to 1 minus 1 by 4. 3 by 4, n is equal to plus minus root 3 by 2. That is cos so gamma is equal to uh, plus minus root 3 by 2. So there are two values. Gamma is equal to 30 degrees and 150 degrees. That is pi by 6 and pi pi by 6. Remember, had it been that it is given that it is making only the acute angle with the z-axis, then it will be pi by 6. So, because the only thing which is given to us is positive direction of the z-axis. So, there will be two angles possible, pi by 6 and phi pi by 6. Coming on to the solution of second question. This is an exponential function. So the integration of 3 raised to power x is 3 raised to power x divided by log 3 base e. And then we put the limits 2 to 3. So upper limit minus the lower limit. So the answer is 27 minus 9 upon log 3 base e. So this is 18 upon log 3 base e or 18 log e base 3. Coming on to the solution of third question. We are given that the function is continuous. If the function is continuous, then its left hand limit is equal to right hand limit is equal to functional value. And in this case, it is at x is equal to 0. So we'll be calculating the left hand limit from the first branch. And, and we are given that the right hand limit is equal to the functional value that is f of 0 and that is equal to 3. So if we put left hand limit is equal to right hand limit or the functional value then clearly minus k equals 3 that is k is equal to minus 3. Coming on to the solution of fourth question. The matrix is 3 cross 3. It's a square matrix of order 3. And they want us to find the value of k when determinant of a inverse is equal to determinant of a raised to power k. Everyone knows that determinant of minus a is equal to determinant a whole inverse irrespective of the order. If you know this thing, then you can directly write the answer that k is equal to minus 1. Or you can also derive it by writing 1 by mod a into a joint of a. Since the order is 3 and mod of a joint a is n minus 1 which is square because n is 3. So with this also mod a raised to power minus 1 comes and k is also minus 1. So if you know the answer directly, then yes, because it's a one marker, you can write it directly or you can also derive it. So this concludes section A.